Feynman is in the forefront of one of the oldest and most intriguing games of hide-and-seek in science, finding the ultimate constituents of the world. In this search, Feynman is a celebrated maverick who was encouraged by his father, a New York clothing salesman, to confront conventional wisdom. One Sunday, all the kids were all walking in little parties with their fathers in the woods. Then the next Monday, we were playing in a field, and the uh, kid said to me, say, what's that bird? What's the name of the... You know the name of that bird? I says, I'm the slightest idea. He said, well, it's a brown-throated thrush. He says, your father doesn't teach you anything. But my father had already taught me about the names of birds. He once we walked and he says, that's a brown-throated thrush. He says, know what the name of that bird? It's a brown-throated thrush. In German, it's called a Fliegenflegel. In Chinese, it's called a Qinglong Tong. In Japanese, a Tohara Tohara. And so on. And it, when you know all the names in every language of that bird, you know nothing, but absolutely nothing about the bird. And then we would go on and talk about the pecking and the feathers. So I had learned already that names don't constitute knowledge. It's the knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzcronin experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell them what you're talking about.